Hello, this is Wampire. I'm here to, to talk to you guys about something um, maybe a, a little curious. Um, before COVID, uh, my EDC was something along the lines of, of this. Okay, so as you can see, it's, it's really not a big knife. Um, in fact, I was kind of moving away from even, even small knives like this and moving more towards um, the how do you call it, the single-use razor blade, that, that kind of uh, utility knives, utility blades where, where you could, uh, you know, s swap the blades out. That's the kind of thing that I was headed more and more towards. And, and uh, you know, I was very comfortable with those, and, and those were uh, great because you put them in your pocket and you don't even feel them. You know, the, even this, it's, it's so tiny. So, you know, yes... For self-defense, I would use this, of course, of course. However, that was, in my brain, it was like a 0 0.0001 percentage chance of, of that happening. And yeah, it, I never, you know, once in a blue moon, I'd have to go downtown or, or something like that. And, and I would be in a, a you know, scarier position. And I did see some action as I was walking along. You know, but in those kinds of times, I upgraded. I, I didn't carry this. I upgraded to something a little bit more, you know. But once again, my life back then, it was, you know, the chances of me. I, I wasn't looking for trouble, you know. And and uh, it, and if it did happen, I'm not quick to fight. That's not what I'm interested in, you know. So, yeah, it, it, this was plenty this was more than enough in fact this was maybe overkill okay now now that things have changed i find myself carrying something along the lines of this and more actually you know i i have uh, pepper spray also and uh and and other things too which i won't mention but yeah so look look at the difference here so this is more like just a, a useful tool and this is more like a weapon, right? So now, during these COVID times, it's been it's become an upgrade. Why? Well, I'm you know I'm still not looking for trouble. I'm I don't want to uh, test myself and see how good I am, you know, in a knife fight or something like that, or or against multiple attackers. Or no, I I I am not looking for any kind of violence i i want peace in my life but under the the new situation here post covid is it called post covid or after covid has occurred you know um i think people are frustrated people are angry um people don't know what, what to do with themselves and on top of that we have the racial issues going on here in north america we also have police issues going on. So as if COVID wasn't enough, we got other things coming up and causing problems. And I think people, some people, not all people, but some people are very quick to fight, very, you know, thinking that if they kick somebody's butt or if they take it out on somebody, that their life's going to become better for some reason, you know, or if they blame somebody else for society's, you know, downfall or, or, you know, why things are bad right now that it makes them feel better for some reason. I mean, it's, it's pretty sad. You know, we're all struggling. We're all in this together. I believe in coexist and help each other out because at the end of the day, COVID doesn't care what we think, you know, it, it attacks us indiscriminately, you know, age, race, political beliefs, none of that matter to COVID. It's just the killing machine out there, you know, and, uh, you know, some people don't even think it exists. Hey, look, look, I, you know, I'm not here to argue about that kind of thing. And if you're one of those people, that's fine. But, you know, benefit of the doubt, you know, unless you have 100% evidence and you're 100% confident, you know, it would be smart just to, just in case it is real. <laughs> and... As far as I know, I I know people that got it. I know two people that we used to play Dungeons and Dragons together. And they were, you know, they were f close friends. I'd go over to their house and we we play. 
they got it. So, you know, um, I, at least for me, I, I don't think it's, uh, it's fake, but anyway, anyway, um, so the reason why I'm, I've upgraded in carrying something like this is because I don't want to become a victim. I just want to survive. I want to live. That's it. You know, and, and it's not even so much um, I need to live because I need to do stuff. Uh, not, not really. I've already told uh, my family that, hey, if, if something happens to me, whether it's COVID or, or, you know, I hate crime or something, I don't know what, that, you know, I've, I've already lived a good life. So, you know, please don't, don't worry about it. You know, you don't have to go get revenge. I, I don't care, you know. So uh, just, just the fact that, um, you know, things are, are so difficult right now and there's so many people in need you know, I'd like to keep on living and keep on trying to help people, you know, that, that's really, that's really only it, you know, and, and yeah, uh, in the meantime, I'm trying to do stuff for stress relief and, and, and have fun on my own and, and, and whatnot. But, uh, also very, very important is it's at times like this where, you're frustrated, you're angry, you might be confused, you don't know why this all of a sudden happened and, and you can't live the way you want to. It's almost like being in prison or something, right? So um, I want to share with you guys something real quick. And this is one of my, my favorite, favorite books is this right here, The Count of Monte Cristo. This, my mom read to me when I was a, a kid, so we're talking about under the age of 10, so like six, seven, and eight, around that age. She read this to me over and over. It was my favorite book of all time. This was written, what, around the 17th century, 16th century? Uh, around that time. So it was written a long, long time ago. It's a literary classic, right? And um, so... The easiest way I could describe it to you, because some people, the, the moment they hear classic literature, they're like, oh gosh, that sounds so educational. This was the Batman of back in the day, okay? So yeah, the, view it like that. This was the Batman story. This is the original Batman story of back in the day, okay? And man, this, this is great. Um, there's a sequence where the main character gets thrown in jail because he's set up. Everything is taken away from him. His life is upside down, okay? So there, where he was living a great life beforehand, and the future was bright, he had a wonderful girlfriend, everything was going good, and all of a sudden, all that's gone, right? And he's still like, he's in his prime or about to be in his prime. He's still a young man, and now all of a sudden, he's put in a prison where it's like a, Ah, man, the prison um, back then is not like today. I mean, this is like you're not going to live, you know. In fact, they're they're counting the days for you to die. You know, they, they expect you to not make it. And, and each year you make it, it's like, you know, come on, man. When are you just going to give up kind of thing? It's it's really messed up. They torture you. Uh, it's, it's, uh, it's crazy. Anyway, um, in that environment where all hope is lost, that is where he meets a priest and he trains. So the priest pretty much acts like his master, very intelligent. So he trains him, he trains his mind, he trains him physically, he trains him in all kinds of skills, you know, he teaches him all about life you know, basically life hacks, <laughs> you know, in every way, whether it's combat, self-defense, um, finance, uh, you know, just, just everything, how to deal with people, all, all that kind of stuff. He teaches them philosophy, all, all of that, you know, and it is amazing. So, you know, that's what he did. He bettered himself. He made himself stronger and better. Another example I could give you is, is Bane from Batman. If you, you know, do some research on the story of Bane, the actual cartoon character, the comic book character of Bane, and you'll see that it's kind of similar, that he, this is a person that, you know, started off in prison, 
I mean, he was born in prison, and then from there he just trained like crazy and became, you know, the, the head guy there, and you know, he just became an incredible force, this underground uh, boss kind of thing. You know, he developed himself, and you know, has became one of Batman's arch arch enemies, even though, you know, Batman's arch enemy you think is the Joker, but Bane brings uh, completely different um, tools to the table, tools and weapons to the table. I mean, it's, it's a very fascinating character. So what I'm trying to tell you guys is right now, yes, things are frustrating and hard and difficult. This is the time to kick butt. This is the time to shine. You know, don't take it out on other people. You know, don't be frustrated. This is the time to show patience. Be be very reserved. And then when you come home, you know, dude, start working out, start planning. You know, how how can you survive this? How can you recover from this? You know, how can you make you a better human being? And it doesn't have to be just finance and uh, fitness. It could also just be your communication skills. Can you become a better person or are you just going to be playing video games and buy toys and just, you know, become more and more uh, selfish and hedonistic or are you going to, you know, I understand, believe me, I do those, do those things too. You know, we all need to be entertained, but you know, at the end of the day, are you going to try to help others and you know, are, are you going to try to make yourself stronger? so that you know we can all coexist together and and make this place a better world you know so at the end of the day i i highly recommend that you train train you start with something physical so if you're watching my videos and training on uh training with Viscrema and stuff it's a very very good place to start you know get get a stick you know or get a, a freaking broom cut that in half and and take off the the brush part and you know start training single stick and double sticks and the idea here is you want to train with that and you want to start to go faster and faster so that a um you're going to learn as you do that you you're not just going to learn the techniques but also you're going to strengthen your um your wrist your forms you know and you're going to develop some cardio so all that's a good thing and then the other thing is, as you go faster and faster, you're going to see that it's a danger to yourself. And you want the control so that you don't hurt yourself because um, that's one of the first things that people don't understand is that when you grab a weapon or, or when you try to do something that you've never really done before, or you're not familiar with, the first biggest danger is that you harm yourself. And this goes on for life because like um for example when you want to accomplish a goal right when you want to accomplish a goal and you're headed towards that goal the biggest threats that you gotta uh, contend with is yourself because you start self-defeating yourself and you start going man maybe this is not worth it maybe i shouldn't do it what am i doing right now i don't i don't even know what i'm doing right now i should just quit so those kinds of thoughts are the same thing as hurting yourself, you know, and that is exactly what you don't want to do. So swinging the stick around, you know, is going to help you get used to it and make sure that you don't hurt yourself physically, but also mentally that you'll be comfortable doing that. And you're, you're not going to go, what am I doing? I'm, do I look like I'm just going crazy and I don't know what I'm doing? And then you start going, that looks stupid. I should stop. And then, you know, so rather than thinking those way, you, you will be a lot more comfortable. You'll know what you're doing to a certain extent. So just keep practicing. It's very, very important. And so at the first thing I got to tell you guys is for self-defense, the blender and the flail, the flail, just think of it as a single hand. So with one stick. Of course, it could be done with a knife. It could even be done with your hand or even with some keys. You just have some keys, uh, you know, the key ring on your finger and the keys dangling right here. And you could just do that. Okay. So that's the flail. Blender is two hands. 
just you know my own definition there so flail and blender master those put in a lot of repetition into those because for self-defense that's what's going to happen you know someone's trying to uh, harm you they're trying to grab you they're trying to you know get close to you to cause damage you use the blender you use the flail make it difficult for them to come in okay or if they're already in you use it create the space so blender and flail as far as like, well, should I learn how some lethal moves? That's all feeding your ego. It sounds great. Oh, if he messes with me, I use this move. He's dead. He's a dead man. That's all ego talk. And if you really did that on the street or in your neighborhood or whatever, A, you're going to have to deal with the cops. And right now, the police situation is not good. They, you know, they. if you just did hurt someone with a knife or something, and they're called in and they're already agitated because of what's going on right now. I mean, they might shoot you first before asking questions. They might taser you first. They might beat you a couple of times first because they're scared too. They're human beings too, you know. And, it, and you know, in my neighborhood, there's already been some crazy people who's already threatened the police and stuff. And I'm like, great, we're not going to have protection here. What, what? You know, it's, it's just incredible stuff like that. So, you know, you guys, we got to coexist. We have to. And at the end of the day, this is this is not about who's the meanest, baddest. I could take care of myself. I got guns all over my house. I don't need cops. You know, I'm glad you're so selfish. You know, that's, that's really not the attitude. I, if it comes down to it, you're self-sufficient. That's a good thing. I'm, I'm not disagreeing with you. It's a good thing. But the attitude is very bad to, to act that way. You know, that's a very insecure, very selfish, very hatred, hateful kind of attitude. So the idea of being self-sufficient is not a bad, I am not disagreeing, but attitude goes a long, long way. Very important. Conduct yourself professionally, professionally, always always very important so you know so that's why um training with the sticks i i think will really help you out get get the um agility in your in your uh, the dexterity and the agility in in your wrist you know in the movements get them down so that you could do them in your sleep and uh and then the rest is being able to um control the timing and, and things so you have to control your adrenaline you have to control your excitement and go okay I'm just gonna use this for self-defense if I don't need to do it I'm not gonna do it you know you have to exercise that kind of control oh this guy he's just a little uh, confused and pissed off about something I really don't need to fight this guy he's already called me names called my mother names maybe threw something at me that doesn't mean I gotta go show him that I'm I am you know more alpha or you know that he just messed with the wrong dude or you know that that's all ego you know so um, it's a scary world right now or it can be but it doesn't have to be so you know show patience you know and and through that you can show real strength and then when you come home that that's when you dude you got to do the rocky thing work out you know, and, and uh, you know, stay focused, meditate, whatever, and, and be, be strong. Be strong for you. Be strong for your family. Be strong for your neighbors. Okay, so that's, that's all I got for now. Thank you for viewing, and take care, folks.